Hi everyone, Sam Crawford here on behalf of Intellimeter Canada and welcome to our video training series. In this particular video, we are going to be demonstrating the installation process for the MF6 meter. But before we get started, let's just take a quick moment to get familiar with the equipment you should have received. So in your package, shipped directly from Intellimeter, you should have received the MF6 meter itself, depending on what was purchased, possibly an automation module, the current transformers, or CTs, complete with labels, both on the CT side, as well as the lead side. Lastly, we have our USB CT programming dongle. Now the number indicated on this USB dongle should match the rating of the CTs. The rating of the CTs can be found on either your packing slip, shop drawings, or other documents that we supplied. So, now that we've unboxed all of the components, we've identified everything, we know that we have everything that we need, it's time to move forward with the installation process. So, start off with mounting the meter itself. So you're gonna choose a suitable location to mount the meter. It's good to keep it at, uh, at good eye level, good working height. Um, if this is being mounted in a new electrical room, you should have the space to mount it directly beside the panel. If it's being mounted in an existing electrical room, you might have to mount it further down the room. Either way is okay, but for the purpose of this demonstration video, we're gonna keep it nice and close to the panel. Okay, so before we move forward with the installation of the CTs, let's just take a brief moment to go over some of the properties of the CTs themselves in relation to the MF6 meter. The MF6 meter is capable of both single phase, two phase, and three phase metering. For the sake of this demonstration video, we are going to use three phase metering with two metering points. So, that being said, each CT is designated for a certain meter. CTs one, two, and three are for meter one, whereas CTs four, five, and six are for meter two. Within those metering points, each CT is designated for a certain phase. For meter one, CT one is for phase A or line one, CT2 is for phase B or line 2, and CT3 is for phase C or line 3. For meter 2, CTs 4, 5, and 6 are for phase A, B, and C, or line 1, 2, and 3 respectively. Now, keep in mind that here we have built a mock-up panel for the sake of this demonstration video. In real life application, you'd want to ensure that any electrical panels or equipment is totally locked off before opening or performing any work. Now, if work must be performed on the live panel, please ensure that you are wearing the appropriate protective gear, such as an arc flash suit complete with helmet and gloves. So first of all, we're going to locate the breaker, load, or circuit that needs to be metered. So, in this case, we're going to use CTs 1, 2, and 3 to meter the main load that feeds the breaker panel. We're going to use CTs 4, 5, and 6 to meter a three-pole breaker located at circuit 1, 3, and 5. Because we are installing CTs on a breaker load, a phase test is required to ensure that each CT is being installed on its correct phase. So in order to perform this test, we need to energize the panel and temporarily turn the breaker to its on position. We're gonna take a multimeter and set it to check for alternating voltage. We're then going to take one of our probes and place it on phase A or line one main feed. Take our other probe and place it on what we believe to be phase A on the breaker. So if we have zero volts difference, we know that this is phase A. If it was any other phase, there'd be a voltage difference of roughly 208 volts in a panel like this. So here we have zero volt difference, so we know it's phase A. Here we have 208 volts, and here we have 208 volts. So we're gonna repeat that test for phase B. Here we have 208, here we have zero volts, and here we have 208. So we know that the middle pole is phase B. Moving on to C. Here we have 208, here we have 208, and here we have zero volts. So we know that the bottom pole is phase C. To keep the CTs in place, we use mounting pads in combination with zip ties. Try your best to keep the CT label with the number, phase, and arrow facing out to make your life easier when it comes time for troubleshooting such an event arise. So, pull the CTs tight. So now that we have all of our CTs in place, just do one quick double check to make sure that your load direction arrow 
is facing the same direction as the current flow and that each CT is on its correct phase. So we have CT1 on phase A, CT2 on phase B, and CT3 on phase C. Make sure to use the mounting bases in combination with the zip ties to make for a clean install. So using a screwdriver, loosen off the feeds one at a time. As you can see, I already have my CT somewhat in place here. So we're going to pull those out of the way for now. We're going to take CT4 and install it onto phase A. And as you can see, our load direction arrows are facing out away from the breaker because current flows out from the breaker towards the load. So, pull on the lines, make sure they're nicely seated, and just double check that we have CT4 on phase A, CT5 on phase B, and CT6 on phase C. Once again, you're going to want to dress your wires up nicely, just to ensure for a clean install. But for now, that's pretty good right there. So now it's time to uh, go ahead and install your reference voltage. So the reference voltage uh, is used to power the meter up, as well as provide the meter with reference to the different voltage phases. So, uh, because we're doing three-phase metering, a separate 15-amp three-pole breaker is required for the reference voltage. So, here we have a 15-amp three-pole breaker right adjacent to the, uh, the CTs we use for meter two. Um, so, once again, you're going to want to repeat the phase test for the breaker intended for the reference voltage. So, when installing the reference voltage, you're going to want to make sure to use colored wire and it has to be specific to your uh, electrical code in your local area. Here in Canada, we use red for phase A or line one, blue for phase C or line three, black for phase B or line two, and white for neutral. So we're going to go ahead and uh, install our reference voltage. Starting off with the neutral, we're going to put the white wire into the neutral block. We're going to take our red, put that into phase A, our black into phase 2 or line 2, and lastly our blue into phase C or line 3. So, now that they're in the breaker, you're going to uh, run them back to the meter. It never hurts to pull on the wires a bit to make sure that they're firmly seated inside the breaker, as well with the neutral block. So once again, we're going to use zip ties in combination with uh, adhesive mounting bases to make for a nice clean install back to the meter. So just to quickly sum up what we've done so far, we have CTs 1, 2, and 3 for our main, CTs 4, 5, and 6 for our three-pole breaker, and we've got our reference voltage installed in a separate three-pole 15-amp breaker. Everything is being run back to the conduit for the meter enclosure, and we've zip-tied everything together and used uh, adhesive mounting pads wherever we can to keep everything nice and clean. So, starting with the CT leads, each CT lead has a label on it telling you which CT it is. So, CTs 1, 2, and 3 for meter 1 go into the bottom terminal strip. So your farthest left termination right here is going to start off with a negative or black CT lead from the CT1. You're going to put that into the terminal strip. Tighten it up using your precision, precision screwdriver. 
and repeat the process for CTs 2 and 3 on the bottom terminal strip. Moving up to the top terminal strip, this is for meter 2. So once again, starting from the left, you're going to insert the black lead for CT4 and then the white. You're going to continue the process for CT5 next and then CT6. Lastly, we have our reference voltage. So for the reference voltage, I would suggest using fork connectors as this is what's intended to be used with this type of terminal. So just uh, using a couple turns only, gently back off the, uh, the screws for the reference voltage terminals and just slide in your fork connectors. Once everything's being inserted, just take a little gentle tug on each line to make sure that they're, uh, they're properly seated into the terminals. Now, very last thing, we have our CT programming USB dongle. So this, you simply just insert it into the CT key slot. This will tell the meter which CTs is being used with it. So now that all of our equipment is installed, it's time to discuss troubleshooting techniques using the three-line display. As you can see, the iMeter MF6 is now powered up and we have load information showing on the display. The display cycles through many different aspects of information, but from a troubleshooting standpoint, we are mainly concerned with amperage and power factor. However, in order to perform this troubleshooting, you must first put load on the circuit, breaker, or feeds that you're metering. Any load above one amp per phase should suffice. If all the information on the display looks normal, right away you can take a clamp on amp meter and compare the amperage on the live feeds to the amperage being displayed on the MF6 meter. So you're going to start with the information for meter one, line one. Place your clamp on amp meter on phase A main feed or wherever else CT1 may be installed and see if the information on the iMeter MF6 display matches the amps on your clamp on meter. You're then going to repeat the process for line two on phase B and line three on phase C, as well as lines one, two, and three for meter two. If everything matches up, it's safe to say that everything is functioning and installed correctly. So here we have a negative power factor showing on line one for meter one. This indicates that there is a problem with the installation of CT1 or the reference voltage. So you can start by making sure that the CT is not installed in a reverse direction. Remember that the arrow on the CT label must point in the same direction as current flow. The negative power factor can also be a result of the CT leads being reversed at the terminals inside the meter. Make sure that the black CT lead wire is in the negative terminal and that the white CT lead wire is in the positive terminal. If everything just mentioned checks out, then there is most likely a problem with the reference voltage. So you can repeat the phase test that was covered previously in this video and ensure that line one on your reference voltage is on phase A and that CT1 is installed on phase A as well. Document your findings and if needed, make, correct make corrections accordingly. All the same goes for line two for CT2 on phase B and line three for CT3 on phase C as well as lines one, two, and three for CTs four, five, and six on meter two. So at this point, your meter should be fully installed and ready to use without any automation. If you'd like to add automation to the metering system, this will be covered in a separate video. But for now, the MF6 meter is ready to use and should be good to go. So, thanks for tuning in to our demonstration video for the MF6 meter, and we'll see you in the next video.